Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Silent again, bringing you another video. Uh, another stealth uh, tutorial uh, video. Uh, today, I am going to uh, go into some more uh, basic things that I feel everybody should know about. Um, kind of surprised nobody, nobody wants to cover this stuff, so I guess I will. Today I'm going to be talking about um, how to add games, basic games, onto uh, your stealth server, and then I'm also going to go into talking about uh, stealth server offline files. Uh, just to just to talk about a few things on a side note here, uh, nobody really talks about offline files online. I have found like minimal support support for uh, offline files uh, I know one of the probably more famous ones out there is the stealthy uh, offline files so that's what I'll be working with today I'm just gonna basically uh, show you how to add games I'm not gonna go into the gold spoofing uh, it's. I mean, to be honest with you, the the gold and uh, the gold spoofing, um, and you, you. Some of you might ask me how do you actually update to the net, to the latest dash as well. It, it's pretty. It's basically the same same way as uh, the uh, as the uh, stealth server files. Uh, the the only difference between the two is uh, stealth uh, stealth uh, online files. They have an actual listener. So you go through the listener, and um, that goes that connects the VPS. Whereas the offline files, there's no listener. It's just the it's just the XEX file. That's all it is. <clears throat> and then also I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the proper way to connect. Uh, you know how to connect. Uh, how to launch your use your uh, offline stealth files. How to connect online. Uh, there is there is no videos online. I if if there are, please um, comment below and, and and advise me of it. But there are no videos or anybody that really t says how you're actually supposed to use the use the uh, online files to connect offline files to connect online. But uh, I'll show you how to do it. All right. So starting up here, uh, adding going to talk about adding games. So there is basically three method three methods you can utilize. Um, you can use uh, an INI file, which is basically just a, a, a text script where you you enter in uh, you, you code it and you enter in uh, information. It, it comes with pretty much the INI file comes with pretty much all stealth server files from the popular ones like Ninja and Teapot to XP Online to you know the little the little skitty ones like uh, 420 or uh, XP Moonlight I think is another one that's come about anyway uh, you just yeah you just uh, you enter in here and it, it usually says uh, usually you can set it to like true or you can set it to false that's one method another method uh, another method is uh, you can you can uh, code your uh, you can code your your stealth files to where when your game oh sorry let me back up, let me backtrack a minute okay so when you use the INI file you can code you can code it to be offer you can be code it to be true or false so obviously when it's true it's on it's false it's off so when it's on when the game title starts up the the offsets that are coded that are coded will start up with the game okay it'll just automatically start whereas the next the other method where you use them a message window to prompt a, a cheat selection it actually gives the user um, an option of how they want cheats loaded and that can be loaded depending on what kind a game you have. So, like, uh, uh, not like for example, Call of Duty. Um, if you want to bypass and just the bypass enabled, you can you can prompt them to select that, uh, or you can prompt them to 
ask them, or if they want to just just do the original game, they can do that. Or if they want the cheats and the bypass, they can select that. That's the second method. And then the third method, which is uh, pretty popular, is uh, mod menus. So you know, uh, two the fa two of the more famous ones would be uh, Call of Duty and uh, Grand Theft Auto Online. So when your game when your game starts up, and then when you're loaded into the actual map, uh, you can program, you can code your your stealth server to uh, load the mod menu. So uh, let's go into um, let's get into it. So uh, as we all know, there's uh, a bunch of you know free sources out there, and some of the ones that you can you can learn these methods on and these are basic methods by the way you can learn these methods on uh, are uh, a couple of them I recommend is XB stealth and Xbox pal um, I don't know where Xbox pal came from I don't remember who they created it but I did want to give credits to I think the guy's name is gifts or something like that for make for releasing XB stealth and then the guy that uh, originally released AP Unknown, I think it's I think it's Colonel. I'm not sure. I, I can't keep track of uh, I can't keep track of everybody like who's released what. Uh, people are com claiming stuff online all the time. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and go into uh, let's do let's do XP Stealth here. Let's let's go ahead and look at this. Actually, you know what? No, let's start with P unknown. Let's just follow. Let's just follow the the methods here. Okay, so P unknown. All right. So with every stealth server, it doesn't matter what it is. What you're gonna want to look for is you're gonna want to look, and it's usually in either title hooks. It'll be called title hooks or game hooks, usually. And if it's not, what you want to do is you want to do Control Shift F and look through the whole freaking thing. You want to find where it says. Uh, initialize title specific hooks okay so this right here this script this code right here this is like this is the start of the the title game launch so you know when you when you uh, when you connect online and uh, you're, you're you're signed in and then when you go to click and launch your game okay this this script right here it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna prompt it's gonna prompt this this script to run right here this this code to run and this code is gonna be filled with you know uh, a bunch of stuff so uh, oh, okay let me back up a minute so a lot of this a lot of this stuff in here is not just your games it's also gonna be like the spoofing of the games so like uh, if you're if you're setting setting uh, like a, your own kind of mod menu in your dash launch or, or using um, plugins or, or or whatever or if you're using yeah you plugins like JRPC tools and uh, X uh, uh, XRPC tools um, or if you're using um, what's the other one okay yeah if you're if you're using your uh, like to, if you're like using your XEX menu to launch your vi launch your games, as an example, your homebrew apps. Okay, this this is where this code right here is where it, it starts. It starts a process of spoofing all of that, all that information. So like if you're looking on your stealth server and you don't see any like offsets or code that indicates that it's spoofing homebrew apps or or uh, game titles or, or any games at all okay that to me that that's gonna be a red flag for you that means that when your customers or when your clients or anybody that's using your ser server goes online and they use this stuff and it's that means that it's not getting spoofed so if it's not getting spoofed you know Microsoft's gonna pick up on that and you're you're you and your clients are probably gonna get banned more quickly so that's that's basically what that is. Okay, so I'm not really gonna go into any of this. You can look at it. This is this is like probably more advanced, but I'm just gonna stay stick with the basic stuff. Um, 
what also while I'm thinking about it right now too uh, if you are looking at your initialized tile specific hooks uh, there's a I have to back up a minute again I'm sorry um, where was that I think it was this one uh, I wanted to show you Okay, well, what I wanted to basically say was, is you want to make sure that you have uh, HUD XEX dash XEX uh, lines of code um, in all these title specific hooks, all of them. Also, if you don't have these either, if you don't have these, because these are these are all these are um, these are in all of the these are in all of the uh, stealth uh, server files like any of them you use these should be in there and if they're not um, I would look for the I would look for these lines of code in in uh, other sources so you can add it to your source these are important because th this is what this is what initially uh, spoofs um, all your all your games and homebrew apps you, it's important that you have these in there and your and your dash and your HUD XEX and then there was one more um, that you needed in there. I don't remember where to put it. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um. Yeah, there was another one called a uh, VX XEX that you wanted to uh, you wanted to have in here. But uh, yeah, VK. Actually, I think it's VK. Let me check. Let me check mine. Uh, okay, yeah. That's what's called VKXEX. All right, you want to make sure that those three are in there, okay? Because it's because it's the when you get those lines of code when you put those lines of code in there, uh, this uh, this entire code that it's gonna tell it's gonna tell your uh, your uh, Stealth, stealth server uh, file to to spoof to spoof those XEXs because that's what uh, that's what Xbox uses when it launches up game titles. Not all game titles use the same XEX, but most of them do. All right, and then um, what else we're we doing here? Okay, yeah. Sorry, sidetracked a little bit. Okay, so now. Uh, So this this uh this line of code here for P unknown, this is um this would be your this would be your your standard INI. So um let's just like for example, if you look at uh this would be your this would be um your MSP spoof. So if I go up here Okay, so it's it's coded for MSP spoofer. And then this, your INI is typically going to be connected to your, um, oh, how would I explain this? Uh, I don't know what you want to call this, your, your, like, main coding area. <laughs> I don't, I don't, have, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know the proper terminology to call this, but this is like, this is like your main, uh, I mean, you, you'll you'll see it. You'll see it. Uh, you'll you'll see it on your um, on your still sir, your still source. It, you'll say like so that like the name the the title of your still sir, source. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna have it's gonna have the title name and then CPP. See, like it says how P unknown is under main source here. It's the same thing for uh, other still source still sources as well. Uh, it's not always it's not always found next to the MAC address, but in this instance it is. But anyway, uh, when you're uh, when you're using the INI method, you're gonna on your stealth source, you're gonna want to find where the INI is initially launched. So you found so it's it's uh, it's gonna be usually here on your in your in your main source files. So once you find it. Um, 
and it, you want to add and say you want to add cheats or whatever you um, what you want to do is is you want you want to look at the you want to look at this code and you just want to uh, you want to just make sure it's like uh, 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 you, you basically want to just uh, okay you know what let's let's back up a minute um, let's just I'll just explain it first and then I'll tell you what to do okay so as you can see I'll pull up the INI file here. I mean, I gotta do is just look at it, and and you can and you can see how it works. But I would try to be a little more visual in this. Okay, here's an INI for P unknown. Okay, so MSP spoofing. When you when you set when you set uh your when you're on a stall service and you set uh, your your INI to true or false, okay? It's this is this is how it's gonna work. So I have it set to true, right? Okay. So it's reading the INI file um, right here. So uh, MSP spoofer equals true. This right here. So this right here. This is the. Uh, uh, this is this is like what's this this is a. Uh, this is what's telling um, your uh, your INI file to to read it as words. Okay, so settings, settings, and then MSP spoofing, MSP spoofing, false. This is automatically going to tell it to read it as false. If it's and it, it this is what it's going to read it as if it's if there's nothing in here, but you can change this to true so it always be it's always true um, but it's gonna have it's gonna have what they call an if else statement so and if uh, if an else statement if else statement is uh, it's it's either it's either true or, uh, it's it's a it's a bull it's a boolean um, well, I think they call it an operator. It's a boolean boolean operator. So it's either boolean boolean in C plus plus means true or false. So so what's how this is how this is reading is string temp equals reader get. So the so it's gonna when it it reads the when it reads the p the i and i it's gonna read it with these follow with these words how you have them set up. So it's gonna read it uh, settings MSP spoofing. And then it's going to check whether it's uh, false or true, as you have it set there. Or if you wanted to use a different word, I guess you could use a different word. You can you can use whatever you want, but for to be for practical reasons, I would I would keep it at like uh, I keep it between false and true, you know, just to keep it simple, simplicity reasons. Okay, so then after that, it's going to read. If it's it's gonna read false, but after that it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna read if temp eleven up here uh, equals equals one temp eleven equals equals true temp eleven equals equals on or or true or on it's gonna go down here and and execute because if it reads it's true it's gonna go down here and read and read this uh, this function right here which is says MSP spoofer equals true. Otherwise, else if it's off, false, it's gonna it's gonna re it's gonna read the next the next uh, little command here. It says MSP MS blah, 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 MSP spoofer false. Okay, that's that's how this code. This is how it's reading in your INI file, and it is the same for each one of these for each time you code this. Now, let's uh. Let's go from let's go back to the we're gonna go back to the title hooks and I just want to show you okay so MSP spoofer well, you have this set up here it's, it says MSP spoofer you have to you have to write a bool statement it's written with the bool statement here okay and then go to title hooks and then it's written with an external extern uh, bool statement right here MSP spoofer. Well, let me show you how all these all these link up to your INI file. Okay, so all right, see right there. 
All right. So it's gonna. So when it launches the, the when the when the title launches, it's gonna when it. I'm sorry. When Xbox or yeah. When you originally started on start up the, the the game title or whatever. Okay. It's gonna re, It's gonna check for the INI file. It finds the INI file. It's gonna read the INI file. It's gonna find the settings. All right. It's gonna read. It's gonna read the INI file. It's gonna read the settings. It's gonna read the MSP spoofing. It's gonna read that it's true. Okay. And then after it gets after that code gets done reading that it's true, then it's gonna go into the next function, which is it's gonna it's gonna uh, it's gonna read uh, it's gonna read the this uh, line of code here. So if it's if it's true. Okay, it's gonna execute these offsets right here. These these command. So then that would then it's gonna uh, uh, spoof your. Uh, it's gonna not spoof. Sorry, it's going. Oh you know, yeah, it's gonna spoof your MSP. And then of course then after you after it reads it's true and it, it and that you're trying to buy a game, then it's gonna send you this command here, this notification here that yes, it actually works. You know. This is the, that uh, MSP spoofing is loaded. Else, if it's false, okay. If, the, if it reads that the INI file is false, okay, um, it's going to do nothing, or it's going to execute whatever you want to put in here. Heck, if you wanted to, you can you can put this down here and put it in here and say uh, P unknown spoofing not enabled or something if you want, notifying the person on the Xbox 360. Okay. So I I wanted to back up again and uh, reiterate what I just said, uh, but change it a little bit. Okay, so when you actually when you initialize the system title hooks when you launch your title, so you, you launch so when you launch your title, it's gonna and you you uh, you say you uh, you launch um, to buy a game or something. Okay, it's gonna Xbox. I'm sorry, the stealth the stealth. Uh, your stealth file, your stealth XEX that you're using. So let's say per, let's say P unknown here. Okay, your P unknown uh, XEX that that you're using. Okay, when you when you launch the title guide MP purchase XEX. Okay, um, your P unknown is gonna recognize that. Okay, and then once it once it recognizes that you you're launching these specific words, so this specific XEX, because this is actually on your, this is actually uh, on your, uh, your uh, RGH and JJ council. All, all these, all these titles here, all these, the HUD, the VK XEX, and and as well as the 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 games XEX, they're all they're all on there. And so when it when you launch it and it recognizes it, okay, then it's gonna check. Sorry, then it's gonna check the I and I file. Then it's gonna check to see uh, what you got marked here. So if it's true, it's going to run the true, the true command, the true function. If it's false, it's going to run the false function. Okay. So that's that's the basics of uh, of the uh, INI file. That's that's how it works. Okay. So now that we talked about how it works, let's uh, let's talk about how you actually um, add it. And this is really not that difficult. Okay. A Honestly, you, you've got you've got 15 year olds out there like you know doing this stuff. Hang on a minute. <clears throat> all right. Um. So. All right. So what you want to do is uh, let's just instead of using let's let's just go with the game here. Uh, what's my favorite one? Okay, let's go with just let's go with Black Ops 2. Okay. Um, so, this right here, this is, this right here you can ignore. This isn't normal. This isn't usually found on stealth server, uh, sources. This right here is just another block of code, code to indicate, um, say like you're running your, your, uh, your stealth service and you're trying to, you know, you're, you, you, you're trying to make money off of it. You're, you're selling tokens or whatever. Okay, so if somebody goes online, obviously they, they you're certain they're and they're not they don't have any time with you. Well, you you can't uh, they're not going to be able you know to get online to to play games. But if they don't if you don't if this if 
this isn't here and it and they just launch a game they can still use your offsets so say you have a black ops 2 menu programmed in here okay they're still going to be able to use your uh, title offsets so basically what this does is is it checks to see um, if they have any if they have any time with you or not if there is no time um, it's just gonna it's just gonna block them from being able to use your your menu or whatever offsets you're providing okay so again they they could be online they could not be uh, on Xbox Live but they can still be they could still be able to use your mod menu or something but for if you're new, if you're new at this uh, I would just ignore this just just ignore this piece unless you wanna unless you wanna use it okay so the important piece here is this right here okay it would be the the if and else if and then if and then else if statements okay so how this is set up is it's got it's it's got basically uh, two prompts two commands so it's got uh, bypass on and off and then cheats on and off so if you just look at this here so you got cheats bo2 cheats true bo cheats bypass true or false if you want it off okay so this is basically the exact same setup as i just showed you with the msp spoofing except they just added more they added more more uh if and else uh statement okay so all you really want to do is you just if you want to if you wanted to uh, add a new game, or if you want to use this that's already coded in, okay, um, or well, first off, let's go with, uh, if you want to add a new game, you just want to copy all this, okay, copy it, and then uh, after you copy it, go down below, and then paste it, okay, and then what you want to do is you want to take your, take your game, and uh, I would just rename all these, okay, so, um, say you wanted to do halo okay just rename it to halo bypass and then halo cheats or if you just wanted the cheats just erase this just erase this line of code because you only need the cheats that's all you need or if you wanna if you wanna add on multiple options okay you're gonna have to add more if else statements okay alright that's that's um how that would work also uh... before i forget very important very important thing Every time you add a new game, okay, each game comes with its own offsets as well. Its own offset. Its own hex value. So I'll show you here. So and these are usually found in the title hooks or game hooks INI. It's gonna it's usually this right here. Uh Xbox games, okay? And then you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna find the, the title uh well, those are commonly known as the title IDs, but let's just, I think of them as offsets because that's really what they are. But you want to find the title IDs of each game. So, uh, Halo, if you want to find Halo, you're going to have to add it in and just name it whatever you want. Halo 3 equals OX, let's just say, let's make up a number, okay? And then there you go. That would be your title ID. And then you are, uh, so then when you add a new game, you copy this line of code. You're gonna, you're gonna have you paste, paste it, and then next to case, you would just simply enter in Halo 3, and then there you go. You're, it, you're, it's all set up. So when you're, when it, when you go to launch your game title, uh, it's gonna the your stealth, your stealth XEX is gonna, it's gonna recognize that hey, this this title ID is being launched. Okay. This is the title ID. It's not going to ne necessarily uh, recognize Halo 3. It's going to recognize the title ID. That's how that works. I'm going to reverse all this here. Okay, and then so once you got your, once you copied and pasted your line of code, and then uh, you gave it whatever name you want, and then you, you you got your title ID set up. And by the way, if you don't know how to find your title ID, the best method to do that is go, to go to uh, Xbox uh, Unity .net, and then you can just look it up from here. If it'll load up, maybe. Okay. Let's just uh, let's go. To, let's go with Black Ops, maybe. 
Dude, come on. Ugh. I really hate that things are slow. It's not going to let me click on it. Why not? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So you want to click on the updates. And then you're going to want to go with the latest. Uh, up well, you don't really need to worry about that. But uh, that's the wrong one. I'm dumb. Okay, it's right here. Here it is. All right. I'll show you. All right. Okay. Black Ops Two. Four one five six zero eight C three. See. That's how you find it. That's how you're going to find your uh, title ID. Alright, so when you got all that set up, then you, you're going to, after you've copied and paste and you've got your, your code set up here, you, then you're going to want to go back up here, okay? And then you're going to want to add a new line of code. So if you're just using cheats or bypass, you're going to want to add uh, your, your new... Uh, your new uh, cheats and bypass. So if it's uh, Halo 3, so I'll just so I just add uh, extern extern bool Halo 3 cheats just like that, and then extern bool Halo 3 bypass. All right, that's all you do, and then. You're gonna go. You're gonna after that. You're gonna go back to your your main source, your where your I and I is being read from, okay. And then what you're gonna do here is uh, you're it's gonna it's the basically exact same thing. It's similar to what you did in, in title hooks. You're gonna copy and paste this code, okay. So I copy it and paste it here. And now this is really important. See how each one of these strings is named in something different. So string one, one one one, and this one's named two, two 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 two. Okay, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to come up with a new number and make sure that that number is not used. Okay, if you don't, if you don't and it's used, okay, when you go to pull up that game, um, when your stealth when your stealth uh file your stealth xx reads the the I and I, it's gonna read that twice. So, say you have call Call of Duty uh, Ghost cheats on, and you have uh, Black Ops 2 cheats off, and let's say you you pull up your you launch a Call of Duty Black Ops 2 cheats, and let's say these temps are the same. Okay, well if you load it up. Ghost, it's gonna it's gonna try to launch go, Ghost cheats, okay, on your Black Ops 2 game. If you don't have this correct, <laughs> it's gonna get all mixed up and 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 jumbled, and then you'll probably get some kind of fatal crash error. Is what will probably happen. All right, so once you come up with your number, let's just go with 12. You're gonna do that to all of these. All right. So then, when you when you have uh, have this set up, then you're gonna want to rename this, okay? And then you're gonna also want to rename this as well. You're gonna want to make sure that this, okay, matches whatever you have uh, set here. So if I have um, if I have Halo uh, Bool, Halo Three cheats. Cheats. As I do in uh, title hooks here, Halo 3 cheats, okay, I want to make sure all these are matching. It's capitalized, okay, there we go. I didn't like that.
Oh, wait, no, it did. Okay. Halo 3 cheats. Okay, and then... I'm going to I'm going to want to change this Halo 3 cheats, okay? I would leave that false. Just leave that false cuz if you if you change to something else like true or something, it's it's going to think it's true or it's going to think it's another name. It's, it it just doesn't work well with the code. Just do it false. I wouldn't do anything with it. Okay. Now, I want you to I want you to remember what I said before, okay? This corresponds to this. So bypasses, bypasses. Halo 3 cheats. I can add it under there if I wanted to, or I could be a little more logical and just put it under cheats. But I had, I've got to add it now. See, bypasses. Halo 3 cheats. Halo 3 cheats, and then recognizes it false or true. Okay, and then I want to make sure that this. All right, is matched up to this, so I would change this to Halo 3 cheats. All right, and then just just like the MSP spoof uh, ex example, it's gonna read the exact same thing, exact same way. Okay, so once you've got once you've got your uh, your new line of code added to your to your I and I section, okay, where it checks the I and I. All right, then you're gonna then you're gonna want, and then you've got your uh, your line of code uh, set up down here alright once you got it copy and paste and set up then you can add in then you can add in your uh, offsets okay so uh, your offsets which is you know the 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 offsets to, that are the actual mods so like uh, the uh, offsets for uh, aimbots or offsets for uh, chams or uh, red boxes, another uh, famous one. Okay, you're just gonna copy and paste them uh, right in here. I mean, this is the most basic way that you can do it. So let's just take um, offsets from. Let's just take offsets from here. I right, gotta go to definition. All right, so I'll just take these offsets. And enter them in there. All right. So if I might be back, if my if the new game I added, pretend this is Halo cheats. Okay. If it's Halo cheats and it's true, it's gonna initialize these offsets, the offsets for the game. You don't you don't need to do anything. It just it just starts it right up. Okay. So what I did want to warn you about though is, okay, not uh you gotta remember you gotta understand how the game functions okay not all games are the offsets are just gonna automatically initialize okay uh, because some usually usually what happens is the the offset uh, actually initializes when the map loads up okay this is coded to initialize the offsets when the game loads up you don't want to or the game title Okay. When initially, when you initially start it up, it launches these offsets. Okay. Not that isn't going to work. You're just going to get a fatal error, a fatal crash. Okay. So when you use this method, okay, you have to use you have to use offsets. All right. That will actually well, only that will launch when the game when the game title actually launches. So Black Ops Black well, when Black Ops Two launches, okay, it's going to launch these offsets. Okay. If it doesn't, do not use it, okay? If you use it, it's going to crash on you. You'll get a fail error, okay? That is like the drawback and downside of uh, using this method. Now, I'm just going to go a little bit further and say if you are, if you, if you have a little bit more know-how, you can code this to actually, for this INI, you can code it to um, uh, initialize the offsets okay when the when the actual map uh launches up but for simplicity reasons i i wouldn't really do that okay i just i just wouldn't okay that that kind of method i feel is best suited for a mod menu okay i feel like that's best that it, it i feel like it saves on the on the coding the car coding crap and it uh it, it makes a it makes things run smoother okay so that's the that's the i and i bit all right. Um, 
if you can't if you can't follow what I did here um I really don't know what to tell you <laughs> I mean I, I I really am not sure what to say uh, this is this is like a simple I think I feel like this is as simple as anyone's gonna make it for you on how to add games to your stall server okay for uh, for the uh, uh, I and I method okay so moving on let's talk about the next one okay so next method is you can use uh, Xbox's window uh, message window to uh, prompt your cheat selections so uh, XP Stealth and Xbox Pal are the best uh, ones that utilize this method so let's go to Xbox Stealth okay so we're gonna go find our title hooks here okay and uh, if you don't know what I mean by message box and look that up here too. Um, go to silent. I'll show you what I mean by message box for those who just can't, they can't visualize it. This really is not that commonly used. It's not that popular. I'm not entirely sure why. Because not most. The only there's only a few games out there that actually use the the mod menu. But this one, I, I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure why it's not utilized as much. But this one just gives you this gives you uh, uh, more options and uh, more flexibility, and if, and and it definitely helps out with people that don't uh, they don't have a computer. You know, they don't have a they don't have a um, they don't own a computer, so they can't use uh, they can't use the I and I file on the computer and they they can't use uh, the computer uh, real-time mod tools okay okay I'm not sure if this is gonna play Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, this isn't what I want to use. I didn't press that button. Play the reach. Come on. This is ridiculous. Pause. Okay, there it is. Okay, so so I hit play. All right, you launch the game title. See default XEX, and then it might show or it might not. No, it didn't show because this thing is slow. Okay, there it is. You see it right there. Okay. See, I this is what this is what it this is what it looks like. So when you pull it up, all right? Um this is how it's coded. It gives you it, I mean, obviously you can enter in whatever messages you want here, but it gives you the it gives you the option. And these message boxes okay, you only have uh they only it the, the uh Xbox uh only allows you to have up to 3 uh, choices okay if you try to go with four it won't work it, it it won't it won't display it okay so when you 
program it to to code to, to bring this up you got three selections now let's go let's close out of that because it's slow as fuck all right now let's go into here and show now I'm going to show now I show you it uh, visually let me show you how it actually works and then I'll go into like uh, again with the I and I like I did with the I and I and show you show you how uh, how to set it up okay so um black ops 2 this is uh this is a good one oh no no gta was a good one on this okay i think it's got gta somewhere on here does not have gta gta in here xbox pal this is a gta where you at okay gta okay so this is this is coded a little bit differently than i have it on my source but it's it's practically the same thing okay so you've got your title game title added all right and there is no i there is no i and i there's you can code you can code the, just so you know you can code the i and i to work along with uh the message box method okay you can you can you can uh you can code them together do I really think that's practical? Uh, maybe if you want to have a have it set up so you could say uh, cheats on or off. So like cheats are on, and then when the person launches GTA, they're they're asked uh, they they get this message box and they're asked these three uh, questions. You know these three methods. I'm sorry, questions about what you want. Or if you have it, if or if you have the cheats off on the I and I, it uh, Xbox. The your stealth file, your stealth XEX, um, won't load any of this. Um, that's one way I could see how it might come in handy. Other than that, I I, I really, I really wouldn't, uh, really wouldn't do it. Okay, so the, uh, um, so how you have this is, um, again, it's it's, uh, this is usually set up with, uh, uh. If else statements, so you know boolean true false statements. Okay, so um, so typically what you're going to see on any still service still source when you're going to want to use the message box is you're going to is you're going to see this code here. Okay, LPC WSTR. Okay, that's that's how you get the message box to to pop up. All right, you're going to want you're going to want all this. You're going to want so when you, you when you add each one again you got the you got the quotation marks like and then the then the actual uh the name the 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 letters that are going to are going to populate okay this is what's going to populate you can name these whatever you want depending on what kind of game you're using so this so like GTA here you got a script bypass okay so we'll call it script bypass and then you got your main your GTA menu so this is called apocalypse or then you just got the normal game okay then there's you got three functions and then you're gonna want to enter in the number so if you got one message here it's it's one two it's two three it's three okay and then underneath it you don't really necessarily have to have the while but um you're going it's going you're going to want to have you're going to want to have the x show message box ui okay and then you're going to want to have the x user index any okay and then what this is see the l the l is always here this is this is the l tells the l is the like the command that tells your script your your uh, code you know this is a this is words. This is a um, message. Okay, so actually, it's just a line. Never mind. That means line. That just tells to go. It just tells it that it's a line, or the next box of the line. So, like when you pull it up, it's gonna say it's gonna say GT options at the top, and then underneath that, it'll say next line, next box. And it'll say underneath that, it'll say the uh, uh, the apocalypse GTA options menu that it will be a message underneath of it. Okay, so this will be your actual message right here. So this is the first one's going to be your title. The second one's going to be a message, whatever you want it to say. Okay, and then uh, 
I didn't. While while I'm covering this, the N, okay, this N here, that's actually telling it to to have a new line, okay. So the L, the L means uh go down to the next box, the next box on the. So when it pops up to the me message box, it's gonna tell it to go down to the next to the next box. So the first box is gonna be GTA Five options, okay, and then the second box, which is the one underneath it, will be for your for your message. That's what the L means. Same thing with this. There's three boxes, right? So you said, so you're saying to to Xbox 360, uh, this game title we're launching up is GTA 5. Okay, uh, launch up, show a message box. Okay, launch up three, um, three options. Okay, these three options: script bypass, apocalypse menu, normal game. Okay, launch up these three options. Okay. Xbox, you know, show, show these, uh, show this uh, message in the first, the first box, the first, uh, first box on the window once it's launched up, and then show this message in the second box, okay, and then in the third, and the, th and then down below the, th show three, three boxes which has these three names in it. That's how the code reads, okay. Now. Really important, really, really important at the end here. Okay, um, you don't want to get rid of this. You want to leave this here. These two, these two always will come with the uh, message box. The uh, the G M B result and G X O L. Okay, let's go. Let me show. Let's go to the definition. Show you. Okay, where they're at. Okay, you want to have these. You want to use these here and have these. Um, Oh, what are they called? Uh, def not really defined. Um, I don't remember what they call those in coding. Um, okay, let's just call it defined for for anybody that's new and they don't really quite understand what I'm talking about. Okay, just to keep it simple. Okay, you wanna you wanna have it uh, you wanna have it defined here as you wanna have these two two defined here. Okay, uh, I would just cop I would just copy and paste what they've got right here. Message, uh, message box result and then uh, X uh, overlap right here um, this isn't really I think there's actually a more there's a more standard way to do it than this but this is what this come with, comes with okay so then we're gonna go back down to our GTA okay and then back over here okay Again, we're we're still on the uh, we're still on the message box here. Okay, this right here, uh, this right here is uh, damn it. Okay, this right here uh, you can uh, you can set the message box to show whatever you want it to look look like. So because it's it's uh, it, the dev because this is. Uh, this is this this is this is going for this is coming from the from the uh, dev kit I believe yeah the dev kit that comes with these all these stall servers which is this right here and so uh, so like this one's set to alert con so when you pull it up it shows an alert con let me just let's just go here and uh, see what we got okay see like this has got the yeah, see Xbox H. It, it comes from this. It comes from the dev kit. That's that's built into these uh, stealth server sources. All right. And if it's not here, you might you can look it up if you want. Otherwise, actually, I think they're all here. Actually, I think these are the only ones they've got. There might be more. Okay, so you can set to each one of these you want. Okay, you can have. Uh, I don't know what this one is. Then you've got the error con and the warning. I, I use a couple of these on my other on my stealth service. So you can, uh, you can have warning con, alert con, error con, icon, whatever you want here, and they're already, they're already, the offsets are already coded for you. All right, if that, if that's that's basically that's that's what that does. So it's it's gonna launch up the alert alert con box, zero zero three. Or you could just leave it if you don't really care, like I do. I don't really care. Okay, and then you've got, and then you got buttons. Zero. You're going to leave that at zero, um, just for practice. I'm not. I haven't messed around with that. I just leave that at zero 
I'm not sure what that entirely does. I could give a wild guess, but I'm not going to. All right, and then this one right here, this is important. Now, if you're going to add, if you're just going to have two options, all right, obviously you want to set that to two, you're going to want to set this over here to two as well. So it's at three because there's three, three options. If there's going to be one or two, set it to one or two. Okay, so three buttons, zero, null, nothing, XBML alert icon, Xbox message, Xbox message box alert icon, and then grab message box result and I don't know what the XOL uh, uh, stands for. Okay, that's how that works. All right, and then this right here, um. I would have I would have underneath I'd always have underneath the message uh, box as well. It uh, it I don't know how to explain what this does because I'm not exactly sure, but it uh, it it goes with it. Let's just say say that much. I it's important to have it with it. If you don't have it with it, you could get possible errors. Does it work without it? Yes, it does. But that's not really what's important here. Just just make sure you've you've got you've got this line of code, the x the the X has overlapped IO completed um, with the the actual message box box code okay when you set these up now for the next important part all right and then we're gonna go into our is, uh, else statements is if or else if if or else if uh, statements okay so if uh, no, this is you. You think this would be uh, one, two, and three, but it's not. It's zero, one, and two. Okay. So if uh, if I if I select uh, this one right here, okay, the first option, that's equivalent to zero. All right. So if uh, game message box results with uh, downward button pressed equals equals zero, it's indicating that I selected this this right here, and then it's gonna it's gonna run this code it's gonna run the code and then it's gonna it's gonna run the code to the script here okay so right here is what you really really want to look at the rest of this just make sure it's in here what it is um, I'm not gonna explain it to you if you're curious about what you, any of these mean you can definitely look it up online that's just more advanced but if you want to keep everything basic I wouldn't worry about it I just make sure I have this in here in order for this to work if you don't have this in here it's not gonna work okay so this right here execute execute uh, sorry X uh, create thread okay this is this is what you want so after after XPy thread startup on all of these Okay, it's gonna it's gonna execute the uh, the next script, the next command. So if you press this one, it's gonna it's gonna run the script bypass. If you press uh, this one, else if you press this one, it's gonna run the GTA menu. If you press this one, it's gonna uh, it's gonna run the next uh, the normal game. So let's go into one of these. Okay, so see I press this. All right, I press the script bypass. Okay. It's at, it's gonna it's gonna uh, it's gonna the it's gonna tell the 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 command to run this and then it's gonna run the script bypass. So we'll go into the next the next block of code here. Okay. So you got this is the next block of, block of code and this is actually on the on the same. You can you can put this uh, for practical reasons. I I I would put this on the same same CPP. You can. Uh, put this on a different CPP and then include it if you want. Um, but I'd only recommend that if you've got like a uh, huge source code of offsets is what I'd recommend. Okay, so this is going to be what it what it runs. Okay, so um, so all these all these are typically the same. You got the D word that win API and then whatever name you want to give it and that name is is this so when you have the script when you use the script okay you name it you, if you say you're you're doing a game and you and you name the script you're going to want to you're going to want to use it's going to be the name that you're going to you're going to enter down here when you when you set it up under under uh 
initial title hooks when you when you uh, initialize title hooks and you set it up under your case your your case uh, um, code here <clears throat> okay this is what this is you're gonna want to name it the same all right see how that works trying to I know it's annoying and I'm dumbing this down but I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize it and make it as simple as I possibly can <coughs> all right so I go back to script that's not all right, actually let's do this all right all right so we're on script all right and it's gonna run it's gonna run your script so now if you uh you got a couple options here okay when you when you do this okay so when you obviously you have the first block of code of the, is initialize the, the the title hooks okay and then this is like a the next block of code okay so um that's the block of code it's not right correct it this is the next script okay this not script this is like the next line of code this is like the next the like the next bracket in the code okay so you got the initialized title hooks then you go into the then if you for the message box method you uh <clears throat> you go to the next to the next um uh line of the net let's just call it the next line of code okay so you go to the next line of code okay so you, if you wanted you could just you could just have uh all the offsets in here you can have it all initialized just like just like we did with the uh with the um I and I method. You could just you could just have all this in here, in the uh, in the next block of method, the next uh, the next code here. You can just copy and paste it in there, and then uh, when you press the button and the game starts up, it'll run all these all these offsets. Otherwise, if you have an actual mod menu. You're gonna want to. You're gonna want to script it so it uh, it will uh, launch that mod menu. For right now, um, this is actually this is actually connected to uh, my. Oh, this is connected to module hooks, but this is actually connected to the to um, another a different line of code. Uh, for simplicity reasons, I wouldn't. Um, I won't necessarily do everything that this is doing. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna code a new game, I would just, uh, I would just use the. Let's see. Here. I would just use the the D word the D word uh, win API method. Is is, is what I do. Okay. If you want to give your, if you want to give, uh, use the message box method. I would just, I would just use utilize that. I wouldn't like uh, do what this is doing here. Okay, it's uh, okay. So load up the script, load it from module hooks, and then in module hooks, load the script. Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, if you're, especially if you're new and you're just starting out and you're wanting to, um, you're wanting to code this and uh, for your friends or for whoever you uh, have connect to your. To your stealth server, you want to give them options. Okay, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Okay, so uh, now um, I'll just go into a little. I guess a little demonstration here. I think just as a small example. So I, I think I feel like I've already, uh, Vard pretty much like explained this how this works. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my source here. And I already got this coded out for uh, Halo Reach. So y you saw on here, I don't have it on there now, but you saw that how I had the message box set up for Halo Reach. All right, well, I'll show you what I did. And it's pretty much exact, it's almost exactly equivalent to um, to Xbox PAL and Xbox, XP Online. It's, it's, the, it's, it's very, very similar how I have it coded. But it is the message message box method. Okay, so uh, we go down here to Halo Reach, wherever it may be. All right, Halo Reach. Okay, so um, see, I I have this set up for cheats. I had this set up with the with the I and I 
you can you can have the INI set to true or false. So true being on that it executes the the message box, or false that it doesn't execute the message box. You can do that. So um, but if you don't want to do that, just ignore those two. Okay. So all right. So I've got the code here. All right. And like I was explaining, I've got my uh, I got my uh, buttons set up. I've got my the number of options I want to have. I got the the Xbox message box alert icon that I'm going to be using, or if you want to use something different, got my messages for my for for my second second box and sorry second second block within the box and then I've got my first block within the box so when you launch it up you see you see this they see this on top and then this is the message on bottom all right and then uh, I got my execute I got my ex create thread here and then I've got I've got uh, halo reach go set up so if they if they uh, when it when it pops up I'm gonna go to this they've got these three options and then when they when they they can choose which one they want so if they just choose say the aim bot okay it's gonna execute in, in title hooks and then a title hooks is gonna go up here and then it's gonna execute this it's gonna execute uh, the command the button that they press so they press the uh, the aimbot only so, okay so it's gonna it's gonna launch just like if it was an INI file instead it's gonna it's gonna initialize it's gonna initialize the aimbot the the aimbot offsets which I have them here or if they pressed if they press the public cheater it's gonna initialize these offsets okay that is uh, that is basically how the um, how the the message box uh, method works. That is like the nitty gritty uh, basics of it. Okay, that's the all the code you have to enter. It's basically two scripts of code. Okay, uh, code for to actually uh, the code to actually um, to 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 run the offsets. Okay, and then the actual script of code in the in the in the initialized uh, title hooks to um, launch the message box. I mean, I've got this. Uh, I, I guess I kind of got the spread around a little bit, but to keep this a little bit more organized, I would like keep all this together. I guess. All right. So that's the that's the message box uh, method. And then the other method, the last one, um, I wanted to go into. Uh, I'm adding games. It's actual mod menus. Okay, so uh, so to to break this down for you, uh, the mod menus, the typical ones you see are uh, GTA and Call of Duty. Okay, so um, technically, technically, uh. You can have a mod. You can build a mod menu. You can put a mod menu into your stealth server source. Okay. You can put it into pretty much any game. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and say a blanket statement that you can do it in all games because I don't know. But from what I can tell, most games you can do it. Like so, for example, Halo. I've been thinking about building one for Halo. You can do that with Halo because. Because the mod menu, the mod menu is gonna launch when you when the game when the actual map launches up. Because if you actually notice when the typically what happens is when the mod menu for GTA and Call of Duty uh, start up, it starts up um, typically usually when you when you first launch the map. All right, so you can do you can they have it programmed to do that. You can do the same thing with the hate with the Halo, because Halo most of the mods are launched through the maps, so you could do the same thing. And then 
it's similar with uh, uh, other games too, like Battlefield. They've they've got a mod mod menus out there for that. I don't have any of the source code for that, but if you find it, please let me know. I wouldn't mind adding it to my own. But you can you can do that with any of those games. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, how you add your own mod menu uh, to your Stell Service Source, or if you uh, whether you got the mod menu from somebody or made it yourself, I'm just going to show you the basics on how you actually add it, how you actually implement it. Okay, um, so I'm going to I'm going to show you GTA here. I got GTA set up. Okay, um, I'm not going to show that. I'm going to show uh, how you first uh, implement it into the um, into the the title hooks, game hooks. Uh, code first and then I'll go into um, how it's being read in GTA because it's this is the this is separate okay um, what I mean by separate is okay the method that I'm showing you for title for initializing it in title hooks okay is pretty much the same across the board but when you but once you once you code it to go into the into the 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 scripts and and code for your mod menu, okay? That's when it changes. That's when it that's when it's separate. So all right, let's get into it. Let me show you what I mean here. Okay. So we're going So I've got this set up where you can uh now you can do this either way you can either use the you can use a combination of both or just either or you can either use uh the message box method that I showed you earlier or the INI method that most all servers use or you could just you can just not have given an option at all and just program your title hooks to just launch the mod menu as soon as they launch the game which I don't know why you do that because most people most people don't like that. That's really not a really good option. Okay, so yeah, all right. So we're gonna find GTA here. Uh, oh, I want to give who to credits to somebody. Okay, Sky Live. I got the GTA this GTA mod menu from Sky Live, which I've got it in my. I've got I, I've I've got it in my Stell Server Force source files on on one of, on my YouTube channel, so you can get it from you can get it from there if you want to use it. You'll have to you'll have to play around with it, mess for, with it from there. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but uh, thank uh, the owners of Sky Life for the GTA uh, uh, files for the mod menu. Uh, I think the I think uh, Xbox Pell no. I think XP Stealth Gis. I think he provided uh, the aimbot uh, mod menus as well. If it's not, I think it's in there. If it's not in there, um, you'll have to look around some of those other Stealth server source files because I I know some of them. They they some of them do have the mod menus for most of the CODs on there. So Black Ops Three, uh, Black Ops Three, and the uh, A A W Advanced Warfare, um, Black Ops One. Modern Warfare 3 and 2, and then uh, Ghost is the other one I think it ha that has. I haven't seen any for uh, um, for the older ones. Uh, what are they? Uh, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, and uh, uh, Call of Duty World at War. I haven't seen anything for that. Alright, so... Uh, where is he at? Come on, GTA. Where are you at? I think I passed it. GTA. No. Oh. That's not it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so, I have it. I had of it. This is like... This is a... Okay, this is a, a really, really basic way to add your game. Okay? A really, really basic way to add your game. Um while we're here I I completely forgot to mention this um at the beginning of uh, a while ago. Okay, so when you uh when you launch your when you launch your game, you're going to want you're going to want uh, all the Stealth Surf services, the good ones I've seen anyway, the decent ones. 
they they have these two lines of code here um, specifically so when you launch your game your default XEX okay it's going to it's going to uh, spoof your uh, your game it's gonna uh, spoof the game so when you run any mods on it all right um, it makes it harder for Xbox Live to detect those mods all right anytime you add a game to your stall server files you definitely want these as well you want these added in uh, in this uh, block of code here that's under the case so when you got the case you got the game name you want to make sure that these are in there and then it follows it follows this specific path all right and I'll leave that there I mean you can you can find these in the source code yourself you can I can just copy and paste them all the code all the code that goes with this the net DL and the X module get handle hook everything that goes with that all right so as you could as you remember with the message box method this is exactly the same okay so when when I go to so when I go to I use the message box method not the I and I so when I go to uh, pull up uh, run GTA tile hooks it's gonna pop up the, it's gonna pop up the message okay and then it's gonna give me three options uh, script bypass uh, GTA menu or normal game okay so if I if I once it once it pops it up all right we're gonna go over here okay so it's and I and I select the method I want right it's gonna launch that method so just very 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 similar to my message box method all right so let's say I so that's that's uh, really not much to, not really not much to say here about uh, how to implement uh, your your menu your mod menu into the into initializing uh, the title the the uh, blah blah not really much to say here about when you're when you're trying to implement your mod menu uh, with your game okay when it automatically starts up instead of instead of like making an XEX uh, uh, file and giving it somebody you can just this is how you just you can just code it right into your um, right into your your stealth source okay I, I I prefer the the message box method to the to the INI but if, if you want to use the INI you can um, the INI uh, you don't you don't do it this way you don't you don't I, I wouldn't do it this way I would just when I if I if you do the INI method when you launch this um, I would just uh, Yeah, I would just I would just uh put the put the uh put this code. Actually, you don't even need to you don't even need to do you don't even need to have all of this. You just need the you just actually okay, you know what? I'll, I'll explain that in a minute about the INI. All right. So, we've uh we chosen our GTA mod menu, okay? So, this is this is coded very similar to um, how we had it in the initialized uh, uh, title hooks uh, section, okay, in that code, it's it's very very similar. So you can see if you just read this along, you can see that after the x after after this the XPI XAPI thread startup, okay. It's 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 launching it's launching the this native DLL uh, this native DLL which is the like the start of the start of code in your GTA file sources source code here okay so it's 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 like uh, you can think of it like uh, uh, one source code uh, implementing another source code is basically what it's like because you can take all these files you can take all the source code and uh, make your own XEX you know if you separate if you want that's i mean that's 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 all it is if you if you want to make your own xcx otherwise this is this is you're basically taking this source code from an xcx that that you can make for a mod menu and just implementing it into the source code of the stealth stealth server files okay so 
let's go so now that we've got we've got this uh we understand we've got this coded uh here for uh in our in our uh, title hooks now let's go now let's actually go to the uh still server uh sorry not still server the gta mod menu files now remember what i said remember what i said before okay the the method to add mon a mod menu okay to your title hooks is the same is pretty much the same across the board okay it's this is separate from from your mod menu files okay so this right here okay this is the your after you after you you uh after you code it and you have it have it after the LP thread start routine okay this is telling this is telling uh this code is uh, uh telling uh the uh the game okay it's telling your your server your your um your your uh okay the code here is telling your still server your still server XEX to launch this next uh source code this next big group of uh of code so you're no longer going to be in the cpp you're going to be you're going to be over here all right so let's go over here all right see this is the start this is going to be the start of my mod of my mod menu here so mod menus um i haven't really like uh researched it too much but if you just if you just follow like the same method of like finding out how each one of them works each each uh block of code works you keep following you keep following it to the next block of code okay you can figure it out you can figure out how it's launching how it's initializing how it's uh loading up the offsets so for example this is native DLL. We've gone from okay, so we've launched. We said we press the button. Please launch my GTA menu. Okay, so it's launching the G GTA menu, the native DLL. This is the start of the GTA menu. And now you remember, you can name this whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, native DLL, but you're launching the native DLL. Okay, so. Um, you can you can look through this okay so you've got four now this is the four uh this is uh this isn't this isn't the normal is if else that we've been seeing throughout this video this is this is basically a loop this is what this is a loop that they call this a loop in c plus plus and it means that it's it's continuously it's continuously uh uh running in your block of code so like you know how like that boolean that boolean statement uh, I told you about earlier. So if you have it true, it's gonna it's gonna uh, go to one one uh, block one block of code. Or if it's false, else if it's false, it's gonna go to the other block of code. Okay. This this is just gonna it's gonna it's gonna go to uh, one block of code and say if it's true. If it's true, then it's just gonna keep it's gonna go back up to the to the um, same block of code. So instead of going so if I say this is true and I go down to the is, if if statement and it's true, okay. Instead of like going on to the next, uh, instead of like going, you know, finishing out this uh, block of code, I'm getting into something that really isn't relevant here, but I'm going to explain it anyway. Instead of uh, going into the next block of code, it's just going to it's just going to keep running the same thing in the cycle until until it's like false. Until it, until you tell it to stop, basically. If you, if uh, you might need to Google, Google uh, what loops are in C++ uh, after you get off this video. I, I don't feel like I explained it well enough. I'd have to. It. I, I feel like that's a completely different video. But that's basically what this is doing here. And a lot of menus. Uh, I see this. I see these loops. I see loops used a lot in code used a lot lot in code it doesn't matter what kind of code you use I always see these loops okay um to be honest that really is not that relevant but I feel like that is 
pretty important to know, especially if you're going to look at this. But most of the time, you're going to see these if and else if statements. Okay, so you press the code. Um, again, this usually is not there. It's usually not. But it's going to run. It's going to run your uh, you, any. It's going to run any kind of code, any kind of code that you have here. So if you just, like I said before, if you just keep following this, okay. So you got you got uh, monitor buttons. So when I was looking at this, I followed this. And I'm like, okay, well, what does each one of these mean? And I went to each one of them and I looked through it. You know, I launched my game. I tested it out. If it didn't work. I go back and and relook at it again, and then just keep going back and forth, a trial and error, and then until I eventually found it. And what I noticed was when I when I first pulled this up, you know, this was uh, this monster buttons was uh, um, it was uh, greened out here. Okay, so I'm like, okay, that looks important. So I went to it, and as you can see here, monster buttons. So what this means is when when the when the GTA menu is is launched up, it's gonna monitor the buttons on your on your um, control pad. So, I mean, if you look at it here, if controls is control pressed D pad right, and controls is control just pressed uh, button X. Okay, if if this if this if they press these buttons, then open up the sub menus. Okay, and then you can go from here. To whatever the sub menu is, which is all this nice stuff. Sub menu equals zero. All right, let's go back here. I'm getting a little more deep into this than what I wanted. All right. And that is like that is that is uh, that is the command, and that's how that's how the uh, GTA menu will load up. This is how it will show. And once again, like I said before, uh, most of these uh, most of these are a um, most of the mod menus are loaded up once the the game map is loaded, because a lot of most offsets. All the cool ones, especially, okay, um, are found in the, the in the actual map data, not the default XEX. I feel like that's a very common misconception with a lot of modders I come across. That's not true. Not all the offsets are in the default XEX. Okay, you got to look at all the files, and most of the time, it's in the actual map data. You have you have the static and dynamic addresses within the map data that is um ah, what do they call it pointed yeah it's like a pointer to the actual uh um offsets in the in the XEX now now let's just step back a minute you got to remember the default XEX all that data in there it, it, it's just really it's just it's really it's really there to 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 launch your game up. So like in uh, Halo, when I go to the main menu, okay, that's your default XEX being launched. That's that's that data running. Okay. Now when I when I go to select a custom game or something, okay, I pull up the custom game. That's still the default XEX. That's all that memory. And then when I look at my stats and stuff, that's the same memory in the default XEX. But when I go to to load my game, you'll notice that it'll say loading loading game because it it's loading that data from the game. It's loading the the game data, okay. And so then when I click the start button on the custom, and after the game is loaded, okay, it's gonna launch. It's gonna switch from the default XEX, okay, being loaded to the to the game map data being loaded. All right. And there are there are offsets in the the default XEXs that are uh, that are are loaded um, into the into the map data. Like for example, uh, the aimbot on Halo. Okay, that is that is from that is uh, that is something that is uh, loaded into the uh, 
from the default XEX into the into the map data. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Yeah, actually that is how that works. Yeah. Okay. So the uh the offsets for the unit because it's it's uh, uh how do I explain this? Okay, so the default XEX the aim bot for Halo as an example, okay, it's it's the the offsets are the same offsets for all the maps, okay? It doesn't matter which one, it's the same all across the board. And that offset when it's set it's going to it's going to launch into that map data okay now so that's so that so when you launch up a game using your stealth service here whether it's iron through i through doesn't matter what uh, method you use that I've showed you okay it's gonna launch it's gonna launch and, and and initialize uh the offsets from the default xcx is what it's gonna do okay Whereas the mod menu, when you launch it from, when it's going to launch from the game map, once the game map is loaded up, it's going to it's going to initialize all those offsets from uh, from the map. So that's I mean that's that's the reason like that that's how that works. I mean if you if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to set up a, uh, add games in here and you keep you keep noticing that your games are uh you know they keep uh they keep do they you keep getting a fatal error you got to go back to your offsets you got to check that out that's typically why you get a fatal error because the offsets you're using are not do not do not come from the default XEX it comes from the map data 90% sure about that i'm fairly confident uh, that's what's causing that mainly the reason I know this is because I've gone through trial and error learning this all right so um, that's the basis of how you uh, how do you uh, add in a mod menu now uh, a mod menu um, after you initialize it in the in the title hooks the mod menu setup Okay, if you're using uh, one from a stealth source or from uh, somebody that gives it to you, or you make your own, you gotta you gotta um, you gotta go on there and you gotta make sure that all these link up, and you gotta read it and you gotta uh, well basically analyze it, basically analyze and like like a fucking it's like a puzzle. C plus plus is like a puzzle, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna. I'm not, you know, sitting here and and saying that uh, that you have to. What am I? What I'm trying to say is anybody can do this, okay? Just some time and a little elbow grease and some commitment, you can figure this out, okay? If a 15-year-old can do it or an 80-year-old can do it, okay, I'm sure you can too. This, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. This took me several hours to figure out, but I eventually got it working. I got working because I wanted to do it, and I had time on my hands. Or I wanted, or if you wanted to add the add this stuff uh, to your sort, your still server source, so you can, um, you know, allow allow people to uh, utilize it when they when they use your services online, especially if you're trying to sell it. Okay, I think. That's what I'm going to cover about the mod menu, mod menu method. There really isn't much more to it than that. Um, the more I learn about mod menus myself, I might make more videos on it. I'm not sure. I'm assuming there are people out there since there really is no <laughs> freaking videos about how to how to initialize games into stealth servers. Stealth servers. I'm pretty sure other people are probably going to ask me to to uh make a video on on uh how to how to more on more how to set up a a mod menu into and implement it into your stealth service source. Okay, so the uh last thing I want to talk about here is uh stealth server offline files. Okay? I have been wanting to cover this forever, okay? There is absolutely like hardly anything online about the uh, about this about these files. I I don't know why. I really don't. I mean, it's not like it's a 
big mystery. I mean, this is open out there to the public. And again, you don't need to be a full-blown programmer to do this shit. <laughs> you just don't. Okay, so I'm using Stealthy. Credit goes to whoever uh, initially made Stealthy. I'm sure some some wise guy will probably post in the comments section telling me who did it. But hey, thanks for doing that. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you what was I gonna go to? I'm gonna show you games and um, how to connect online. Okay, so uh, games is <clears throat> this this section of this video would be a lot shorter but games is pretty much uh pretty much the same it's the same same setup as the stealth source files again like i said at the beginning of the video the uh the only real difference between as online versus offline files like modern uh, modern warfare uh uh said in one of his videos uh one of them, one of them uh, uses a, a VPS server, okay, a listener off a VPS server, and the offline files they don't. That's that's the real, that's honest, the real difference. So this, like, XP Stealth and XP Unknown, Xbox Pal, and mine, it's coded to to uh, connect and and work with uh, uh, connecting to a VPS server to. To connecting with uh, um, to the to the to the listener. Uh, I'm sorry. It's it's coded to connect to the virtual private server. Yes. Or if their person's using their computer for whatever weird reason. Okay. Whereas the stealth, the offline files, it's just coded to 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 spoof you and launch you. Uh, it's it's coded to emulate your your uh, Xbox if, as if it was a retail um, right there at your own right there at the actual Xbox instead of being emulated on the VPS now uh, as far as like uh, to to use your offline files for uh, putting games into your into your uh, stealth server offline source is the exact same you can use the INI method again let me back up these are three basic methods you can use the INI method you can use the message message box method or you can use the mod menu method so if you make your own yourself your own mod menu you could put it in the you can code it into the stealthy uh, or you can code it into the stealth server offline uh, files. Um, the gold spoofing again. Gold spoofing. Uh, I, I forgot to mention this. Gold spoofing. Same thing. 
you can do that too. Okay, you just gotta update the correct offsets for the uh, for the gold spoofing. Um, I I don't really I'm not really gonna cover uh how to implement the those three methods into uh, your stealthy. I just keep saying stealthy. Your stealth server offline files. I'm not going to because it's the exact same and it's uh kind of be a waste of time for me to to re-explain myself. But um that's that's how that works. Okay. So um the other thing I wanted to cover was uh how to connect how to connect online with your uh your offline files. Okay. So uh the best practice that I would recommend especially if you're going to put on a new KV, okay? Before, before you I remember watching Modern Warfare's uh, YouTube video on this. For whatever reason, even he did not did not say how to do this. And for the life of me, I, it took me a while to figure out. I didn't understand. Like, what what am I supposed to do here? I mean, yay, he kind of explained the differences between them, but he didn't tell me how you actually connect online. <laughs> I don't. I, I had to. I had to like ask someone basically you know hey I'm sorry this is kind of a dumb question but how do I use stealthy how do you how do I connect online with the stealth server stealth server I and mean, how, how do I get this to work and he's like just run the virtual studio and then take the XEX uh, file and then send plugin uh, set it as uh, plugin 2 and dash launch and then of course make sure your XBM is also uh, set as well and then you just uh, you just shut your Xbox off and then launch it back up, and uh, it will connect online. It won't. It won't. It won't connect to. It won't connect to the VPS, of obviously. But it. It will. It will connect. It'll spoof you. It'll spoof and emulate your console. Console, okay. And it will spoof you online. It'll make it. It'll make Xbox think uh, that you're running uh, a retail 360. Now. Um, now that I, you know, I, I told you about what you actually needed to do. Okay, so before you connect online, and I, I pretty much feel like this is the same. This is pretty much the same with uh, um, still server files as well. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> when you uh, when you connect online, all right. I already told you about. How you're uh, you're gonna connect your stealthy stealth server sources offline and online online, but something that I I really really feel that is um, important for you to know, okay, before you connect online, is um, you need you need to you need to connect uh, obviously you need to connect through you need to connect through uh, a new VPN you need to reset uh, reset your MAC address if you can do that. And you need to uh, you need to delete your old profile, okay, and re-download it again, okay. What you gotta understand is when you're when you're trying to uh, communicate and talk online, all right, with uh, with people. I'm sorry. When you're when you're communicating with Xbox Live, okay. Um, if you try to if you try to sign in your old profile while connecting with your new spoofed console console okay uh, that's gonna send a red flag to Xbox Live telling them uh, this is kind of odd you got banned but you're trying to connect 
with the profile okay um, that's weird that's a red flag to us uh, if you try to if you try to sign in without redelling profile you'll just get an error anyway um, another th another thing I wanted to mention too is okay uh, Xbox Live um, they won't let you uh, when you have games on demand or content that uh, that you own that comes along with the profile they won't let you uh, sign into like 10 different Xboxes okay and and use them at the same time and you can utilize your games at the same time so uh, for your friends and family they or they won't Xbox won't let you do that to them that's that's them losing money that's them and their their uh, their friends losing money I don't know what else they call it they're like the game developers yeah that would be their friends and they don't they don't want that they don't want you to do that so they're only gonna allow you to uh, sign in to so many Xboxes that's a that's a there's a there's like a I'm gonna call a profile ID that's like a, assigned to I think it's XUID uh, assigned to each uh, individual profile okay so you, you when you go online with a new uh, retail Xbox console a new KV you know, or whatever you're gonna wanna you re-download your profile telling Xbox 36 Xbox Live Hey, look! I'm on a new 360. I'm downloading um, a new a new profile um, onto a new console, not onto a band band console. Um, that is uh, that's pretty much it for um, this tutorial. Uh, comment below. Uh, just a reminder: um, no hater messages. If I see any, I will delete you. Um, I only accept. I only will tolerate constructive. Uh, constructive feedback and uh, you know decent disc discussion. We're all we're all adults here. All right. Until next time, I do plan on making some other stealth server vi uh, videos. Anyway, uh, thanks, and uh, I hope you have a I hope you enjoyed it.